Hi, my name's Katie. I'm the social media manager. And I'm Samantha. I'm the director. And we work at the Cattery. Yep. Yep. Okay, so today, what are we talking about today? Well, Katie decided to do a ranting video about decline. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling hot that day. I was really mad. I saw some comments on TikTok and I was just like, why are people defending decline? I don't understand. Like I... And in my rant, I'm 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 feeling the I'm feeling the fire come back right now. <laughs> in my rant, like how do we not know collectively as a society that decline is bad? Like how do we not know this? And this might go back to a previous podcast where we talked about common sense isn't common, honestly. Yeah. A lot of people just not. don't know about decline. Maybe they don't understand all the bad things that come after decline or that happen during decline. So but I ranted a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And in response, most of the response was, yeah, of course, I'd never declaw. Yeah. But some people had some comments. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we want to address some comments. Yeah, let's go over these interesting um, opinions that, you know, come out whenever we voice our opinions sometimes. <laughs> so multiple people said, um, with varying size, uh, I have nine cats all declawed. None have problems. It's fine. Oh, my Lord. So I, I just want to take a minute on everyone that argues with us in a video that we're wrong because the cats they've had have never done something. Our sample size is much larger. Oh, for sure. Than the common person. Like we've had over 10,000 cats. Yep. And not only the cats that we have had physically, we get emails from all over the world about things we get people asking us to take cats that we can't take yep so our sample size is hundreds of thousands not even only Honestly. ten thousand but yep. even if it's just the ten thousand it's still a lot more than nine it's still a lot more than <laughs> nine or four or mm -hmm. 15 over my lifetime or whatever it is exactly so we have just a larger knowledge base than just your nine cats or whatever it is and honestly, if you have never had a cat with problems, you're lucky. That's shocking. It's shocking. Yeah. Because. That's a miracle. I was doing some research. <laughs> <laughs> we did our research. Yeah. And which would be nice if some of these people would do before they commented. I mean, it's in a perfect world. Yeah. Yeah. 50% um, of cases of cats that have been declawed have had short-term issues. And that includes pain, lameness, hemorrhage, decreased appetite, personality change, infection, lethargy, cystitis, etc. And just why would you? That's fifty percent. That's fifty percent. That's a lot. Yeah, that's shocking. And then long-term complications. These were all like different for each cat like each thing yeah was different so like claw regrowth was a relatively small percent but it does happen it's not really claws that are regrowing but um that's what it's called lameness chronic pain sore paws increased biting aggressive and aggressiveness and litter box issues um also the people that are saying i have nine cats and i've never had an issue maybe your cats aren't old enough to have issues yet Exactly. So the litter box stuff, if it can come at any time, but a lot of it comes later in life. And mm -hmm. it's partly because, partly because not only are you taking off part of your cat's nail, that alters their gait, which yep. causes arthritis. Yep. And at times, obviously arthritis it it comes later yeah like a long time after your uh your it comes later in life anyway but if your gait is altered it comes later mm -hmm. um, so maybe you just haven't experienced that yet exactly um, it can happen way earlier because not only from the arthritis but it's a painful surgery yeah. and when you when the kitty's paws are hurting and they get in the litter box, they associate that pain with the litter box. So exactly. then they stop using it. Exactly. Um, so there's all those things. And I don't think we, maybe we don't need to go in. Maybe we do. I don't know. In depth. Maybe. maybe on some of them, the more, I feel like the more prevalent ones, litter box problems, 
that's something I ranted a little bit about in my video was if you know you declaw your cat and then they end up with litter box problems what do you do you call the shelter you call the shelter and I would say 90% of the people asking us to take their adult cats are because they're litter box they're having litter box problems yep. and almost every single one that I ask did you declaw your cat the answer is yes yep and literally, if you think about it, you declare your cat, now it's having litter box problems. It's not using the box, it's peeing all over your house. Why do you think somebody else wants that? <laughs> like it's Yeah, so... people that get that cat have to yeah. do the same things that you would have to do. Exactly. Like pain management yep. and retraining them to use the litter box. Yep, and that's their cat that they've had supposedly for years. <laughs> yeah, so why aren't the people putting in the effort for that. Like, mm -hmm. they're the ones that caused the problem. Exactly. Or even if they didn't cause the problem, they purposely adopted a cat that is declawed for yep. whatever reason. Exactly. So deal with the problem yourself. Stop trying to put it on, like, other people. Yep, exactly. Especially shelters that yeah. really want to take cats that don't have a voice. Yep. And that cat that you declawed has a voice. It's your voice. Yep. Um, another thing... Not just on this video, but lots of videos. But someone did say, okay, well, you can pay for my living room furniture and curtains. Let me say this loud for the people in the fucking back. Yeah. A cat is not an accessory. Yep. If you care more about your furniture than your cat, please just don't get one. Exactly. Don't adopt a cat, man. You don't want a cat. If you care more about your couch, why you, are you You want an accessory. Yeah. You want something. You want. Yep. Oh. I know. <laughs> now she's getting mad. <laughs> Up next, Sam's rant video. <laughs> <laughs> They're not accessories. Mm -hmm. They're literally living creatures. They're, they, they trust us and care about us. And they're just, they're not for you. They're not decoration either. Like they don't live in your house for you. Like that's just, that makes no sense. I don't understand how you could think like that. They're, ju they're just not accessories. They're not. They're human. They're human. They're, they're humans. They're living <laughs> beings. They're babies. <laughs> like someone said, this made me laugh so hard. You can declaw your cat if when your kids get into things, you chop their fingers off. Honestly, which literally. <laughs> it's the same thing. It really is. My son right now, he's almost two. He's one and a half. He's sticking his hands in everything. Like it's everything. Like, he puts things in the toilet. Like, it's constant redirection, trying to get him to not do stuff. And I have not chopped his fingers off. Might be easier. <laughs> <laughs> but we love them, and we don't do that to people and things that we love. Things. Exactly. Animals. <sighs> okay, another one. I have only had the nails removed. The vets here don't remove at the, at the knuckle. Um, no. That's not exactly how it works. So there are three ways to declaw a cat. They're all called the same thing, but there's three ways to do it. With a scalpel, with a guillotine cutter, and with a laser. Ooh. They all do it at the exact same place, which is at the first knuckle. Yep, because that's where the claw comes from. Yeah. So if you had your cat's nails removed... That's, then, that's what happened. That's just cat anatomy. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> basic cat anatomy. Now, if I am wrong about this, please let me know, but I looked at multiple resources online mm -hmm. about how to declaw a cat yeah. or how it's done, not how to do it. Like, it wasn't a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> this is how you do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Somebody compared spay and neuter to decline no. because spay and neuter can also have complications. So if we have a problem with decline, we should also have a problem with spay and neuter. So again, it's it's not the same thing. <sighs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm at a loss of words right now. <laughs> so just in general, <laughs> spaying and neutering prevents suffering and death. Yes. In the 80s, 17 million cats and dogs were euthanized every year at shelters. Oh, my God. Um, because of spay and neuter, that has been reduced to, um, depending on what thing I read, it was just under a million or just over a million. Wow. Which, which is still, 
I mean, it's a huge difference. Yeah. It's still too much. It's way too much. But, but it wow. wasn't that long ago. It was like $10 million a year. You yeah. Guys. And that was during my lifetime. I wasn't alive in the 80s. But <laughs> it was not that long ago, I remember. It was not that long ago. I I believe that it was still $10 million when we started the cattery, yes. but I could not find that figure. I, so, that's around the time that I was working yeah. at the other rescue, and that was the figure that we were using. So that's got to be... Um, besides saving lives, there's a lot of other benefits to spay neuter, which we're not going to get into here because that's not what this video Different topic. is about. And we talk, yeah. we covered it before, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spay neuter your pets. So it, it benefits the cats. Of course, there's there's complications with every surgery, whatever. Um, so when you are declawing, you're only benefiting a person Yep. There's no benefit to the cat. There's none. At all. There's a lot of bad things that happen for the cat. What's the opposite of benefit? Detriment. A lot of detriments to the cat. That's all it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Zero benefit. Um, so another person said, just for a different viewpoint, I have lipedema, and if I get scratched by a cat, I get infections and I could die. Why do you have a cat? So I I get that cats have a million positive influences on a person. Oh yeah, for sure. But no one is it's not a necessity. It's not. And to mutilate an animal just because you can get sick that it just doesn't seem right to me. Mystery loves company. <laughs> I guess. And so I will say I used to have a different viewpoint on this because my mom had very thin skin because mm -hmm. she was older and on the medications that caused that whatever. And she was by herself. My grandmother had passed away. She was by herself for the first time in her whole life. And she was lonely. And the only way she could have a cat was to get it declawed. But this was back in the day when we weren't so... Like, we didn't really understand what we were doing. Exactly. Um, so, we did get her cat declawed. Mm -hmm. That being said, I would not do that. My mom has since passed away, but I would not do that now. Right. And I don't think she would want to do that now. Exactly. It's so much she understood. Come out. So yes. much more research and information. Like, I know that even my grandma had her cat declawed on my dad's side she had her cat declawed as well and her name was Odette <laughs> I was like what was her name she was a very large black cat her name was Odette and my Nana had her declawed before she knew before any of us knew anything and Odette had so many problems honestly later on in life and she never declawed a cat after that and I think I feel like there's just so much more research and information out there now like if Educate yourself. <laughs> but yeah, no. I don't know. I, I feel like that if at this point in my life, I was like my only options were to declaw my cat or not have my cat. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to do that to my cats. Yeah. That's true. So I know it's sad, especially if you're a cat lover, but yeah. I want to mutilate their little feet forever. Like, I'm not going to put myself above a cat. You know? Yeah. I'm not going to put my my need for to have a cat yeah. over the comfort and well-being of a cat. Right. Exactly. And as humans, we get to make that choice. <laughs> yeah. That's part of what makes us, um, what is it, higher beings. We have, the, <laughs> we have the choice. Higher beings, air quotes. Yes, higher beings, quote, quote. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that this person brought up was that some apartments, their rule is the cats have to be clawed. Declawed. What did I say? Clawed? Clawed. They have to be declawed. And, and I have lived multiple places and in all my life, I have known of one apartment complex that required that. <clears throat> and I've of never course, heard of it. My, my experience is not every apartment complex right. in every part of the country. Right. Um, but still, I just, 
I would rather rehome my cat to a person that loves it if I had no other option. If that was the only place in the world I could live, <laughs> I feel like I would rather live in my car, which people yeah. do by choice, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen them. It's weird. But... I, I feel like I would do that. Honestly. Or find my cat a home before I chose to move into a place that forced you to do that. Yeah. And also, which apartment complexes are doing this? I want to talk to there, them. There's none here. <laughs> so I I get silly sometimes. And I, I, I used to live in Rochester, New York. And I got on Google Earth. And I started going, or Google Maps. And I started going down the way I used to walk to school. Because I walked to college. Yeah. Because I didn't have my license right when I moved. And that's a whole other story. Um <laughs> So I started going down the way that I used to walk to college and there was an apartment complex there. And I'm like, oh my God, a new apartment. Let me look at this. And I saw in their thing that they required cats to be declawed. That's the only one I've ever seen. That, what are the chances of that? <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, well, I would have never lived there. So now you know what a crazy cat person does in her spare time. Yeah, of course. Like... <laughs> Do they allow cats? I could have lived there. <laughs> oh, I could never live there. I'm going to call them. I'm going to send them brochures on why you should never declaw cats. So, yeah, if this is a thing in your area, I think you have some work to do. Like, yeah. Like, educate. Cause attention to, like, yeah, make attention towards this. And, like, that is, that's barbaric. And they should not be able to make you do that. And honestly, I mean... A short tangent, just apartment complexes charging the abs absorbent. Yeah. Is that the right word? I Doesn't so. that mean absorb like a paper towel? Uh -uh. Exorbitant. Exorbitant. <laughs> absorbent. <laughs> that was like, no, that's right. <laughs> I'm fully ready to back you. <laughs> um, exorbitant. Pet, yeah, the pet fees are ridiculous. Oh my God, yeah. They do not chart, like, who makes, who has more damage? A cat? or kid and Please. yet they cannot charge oh you have kids i'm gonna charge you extra for how your many deposit. kids <laughs> like, when i was in apartment living or whatever first of all the ones that did have pet deposits they weren't like they are now yeah like i remember mine being 200 dollars, and it was refundable mm -hmm. so why is why aren't they refundable like almost all the times i've seen them because we check here yeah um at least half of it is not refundable. Mm -hmm. So if you have a good cat that doesn't, well, I shouldn't say good cat. If you're a good human that has trained your cat not to destroy things, mm -hmm. why are we paying exactly an extra deposit just because we have a cat? You have to clean the carpet anyway when someone moves out. They are supposed to do that. Yeah. Uh, Katie does uh, pro property management. I do. <laughs> You're so supposed, she knows this stuff. I know you're supposed to shampoo or completely change out the carpet between tenants. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, whenever I lease out, I don't. I do have a pet deposit, but it is refundable. It's only $200 for that reason. As it should be. Yes. Um, in the apartment, the last apartment I lived in, um, I had to sublease it to someone that I knew. Mm -hmm. And her cat... Oh, destroyed no. the blinds you know that was like twenty dollars to fix but now like like i just oh, bought so, new blinds oh, that's a good idea and now the, like you wouldn't get your deposit back no. because of that they would be pissed about it yeah yeah so anywho like that's bad enough but telling your people that they have to declaw for what reason for what what are they gonna do Cats usually don't destroy carpet that much. Yeah, and even if, if they are going to scratch something up, it's probably going to be the owner's furniture, <laughs> like, yeah, which you have cats, no control over. Most cats are vertical scratchers. Yep. Some are horizontal, but... But very rarely. Like, one of my cats was only horizontal. She did not destroy my carpet. No, I've never had a cat destroy carpet. And that's, again, that's my experience, my limited experience. I have never had that much carpet in my house, but I've never had a cat that destroys horizontally. Now, they will rip up my couch because it's up and down. They'll do that. But literally, I, I have never understood that unless they're worried about peeing on carpet. 
which in which case you're supposed to clean the freaking carpet yep exactly um, and renting a stanley stanley steamer is a hundred bucks yep exactly it's not yep. it's not half of a full month's rent no yeah some of these pet fees are crazy and they'll also charge you a pet rent on top of it which is like where does that money go <laughs> my cat doesn't have a job yeah, and what's, <laughs> like, if an animal does do damage, then charge for the damage. Yes, exactly. That's why you do a deposit, but it should be refundable mm -hmm. if they don't do deposit. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> if they don't do damage. But anyway, yeah, y'all need to get on your soapboxes if you're in a part of the country that forces their apartments, that force their tenants to declaw, declaw cats. It's That's messed up. Just say no no cats if that's what you mean. Yeah. Like, but don't force people to mutilate their animals so they can live there. That's, that's really messed up. Um, one other. <laughs> oh, yeah. One other. This is the last one. <laughs> the last one we wrote down. I didn't go through all, like, 1,000 comments. But <laughs> somebody said, but you're okay with circumcision. Circumcision. What? It's not the same. <laughs> what are you thing. talking about? We're not cutting off the PP. No. Like you're not cutting off the PP. It's uh -uh. circumcision. <laughs> I don't understand that. Again, cat anatomy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need to do a cat anatomy lesson, guys. It's not the same thing. Not. There like, yeah, there are problems with that too, but yeah. It's totally different. Yep. It goes it back doesn't... to the whole, it's not for the human's benefit. Like, the clawing is specifically for humans only. That's it. Just. <laughs> but you don't circumcise a cat. <laughs> no, they're talking about humans. Oh, they're talking about circumcising yes, humans? That it's the same. We don't what? care about that, but we care about the cat claws. Oh, wait. So I need to make a rant about circumcision? <laughs> <laughs> a little out of my area <laughs> that's, a, that's a very wide jump now it makes more sense i was like yeah neutering isn't circumcision that's where my no. brain went that is hilarious that's even more funny <laughs> oh my god comparing the two so yeah <laughs> one's one's like totally that's it's different that's so different. it's a different species <laughs> it's a totally different species and you don't know my life <laughs> You don't know how we feel about circumcision. You didn't ask. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but it's not the same. It's so far removed. That's insane. Yeah. So, Thanks for the laugh, though. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Oh, goodness. Um, I, I am trying to also delete the responses to these comments that are calling people names and bullying because yeah that's like we can disagree with each other without that so if you're yeah. one of our followers that made it this far in the video and don't bully people though yeah don't bully people. the purpose of the rant wasn't to to bully people it was more or less in my <laughs> in my fit of rage i never once said you're a shitty person if you do this you know shame on you i said guys don't we know this is bad like come on like inviting people to come to the table and tell me if they think it's bad or not. Honestly, <laughs> like, do you think it's bad or not? Because it is. It is bad. It is bad. Um, but yeah, but bullying never never goes the way you want it to. Don't do that. Like, we are going to tell you, just don't get a cat then. That's yeah. not. Yes, exactly. Don't get a cat. But, but if you do adopt a declawed cat... If you're looking specifically for a declawed cat and you adopt one, just I hope you are aware of like aware of all the things that might come with that. Um, but declawed cats do need homes too because people do give up on them once they yeah, mess them they up. Do. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. Unfortunately. Yeah. They create the problem and then want someone else to deal with it. Yes. So so tell a joke so we end with something funny. <laughs> Knock knock. Who's there? Interrupting cat. Interrupting yeah. cat. <laughs> there you go. There's your joke. Go tell it to all the people you know. <laughs> I was gonna say cow, but cat is so much funnier. It really is. 
Okay. All right, that's our if, podcast, y'all. If you like our stuff, whatever. Yeah. If you like us, follow us. Follow us, listen, share, comment, like, ask us questions, ask us for opinions, and yeah. Come back next week. The end. The end. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.